morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Happy Sunday, everybody. That's Patrick with Light Source Engraving. And that's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And that's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And together, we are the Laser Makers Round. And welcome. Welcome, everybody. Glad to see you all. Today is uh, Q&A, and we're going to talk about a couple of files that we've got and we're going to make available and you know i'm always late to the party <laughs> but i did do uh, a little irish guy a gnome for uh saint patrick's day even though it's a little bit late this is like kind of 3d out of one piece of wood so different levels of the wood glued together with a stand and today i'm going to make this file available on our website lasermakersrealm.com and I'll probably put that one up tomorrow. Uh, I've also got some honeycomb, honeycomb hold down pins. So I've got the long version, which is this, and then I've got the short version, and I'm gonna be putting uh, both of these in our spin the wheel today. So um, I will be giving away one set of these in both sizes. So that would be 10 of the long ones, 10 of the short ones. They fit any honeycomb bed and uh that's going to be one of our spit the wheel gifts today and uh patrick also has some honeycomb hold down pins a different style yep if you saw the video mine are a little different but two different widths to for hopefully a variety of honeycomb beds and then i also have a version that's longer for taller material but check out the video and i explain uh, why the different sizes but yeah, we'll do 10 of each size. So that'll be 60 total. Okay. And Steve, what do you got going on today? Well, here's the clock I made for Laser Makers Realm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, fortunately, it sold yesterday. So I don't have one here to show you. Uh, but the files are still free on Laser Makers Realm to download <laughs> that particular clock. But it was really nice. Uh, so I just decided instead of uh, the clock, uh, this is what I've been designing, and this will be on. I love that. Uh, this will be on my channel uh, this week. Uh, maybe we'll do uh, a couple free downloads of that to, in the in the spin the wheel. And that's nice. a three D. She's twelve inches three D. Uh, uh, four actually four four different levels, but super nice. Really easy to personalize. So when, we'll do nice. a, a few few drawings of that and we'll spin the wheel. So. Um, I just want to say hi to everybody that's out there. Uh, so we have uh, Shar Farm Made from Homewood, Illinois. Uh, hi, to, hi to Shar Farm Made. Dave Fisher is here. Sharon S Simonson. Uh, Wendy, thank you for being here, Wendy. Always happy to see you in there. Army Dogs Creation is always here. Thanks for coming. Jeff Siegels. Uh, stumbling, bubbling idiot. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? Uh, VRich3733. Scott Lees, Cliff Parker, uh, Andrea C., Jim Hamilton. Hi, Jim. Good to see you here. Uh, let's see. Tina Kosar, uh, Merrill, who I think might be, could be Carl or could be Merrill. I don't know who it is. <laughs> One or the other. Nathan Pennington, Chad Fisher, Tom Horton, uh, Dr. PD, uh, Stephanie uh, Hoser, and names to remember. <laughs> from Pennsylvania. Bob, the tech guy is here. Hi, Bob. And that's uh, so far all of the comments that I see. So I want to say hello to everybody. Happy Sunday to everyone. And uh, we're going to get started right now. So uh, let's start off with, um, I wanted to show you this guy, even though it's a little bit late, this guy is... Um, something that I did for uh, last week, you know, St. Patrick's Day. He's one layer of cutout, and then the items are glued on top of each other. And this can all be done on a single 300 by 200 piece of wood. So I'm going to make this file available. And you know what? Even though I'm late to the party, <laughs> which I always am for holidays, it'll be good to have in your repertoire for next year. So uh, when St. Patrick's Day comes up again, you'll be ready to go. 
And then my uh, bench dogs, this is something that uh, lots of people don't use. They use them in woodworking. This is a bench dog. So the idea behind this is that you put it down into your honeycomb bed. And when the top rounded part catches the wood, it bends like that and it locks in place. So it doesn't matter what size honeycomb you have, this is gonna work. Now, some people have a very short honeycomb with hardly any room underneath. So I've designed these in two ways, the long one, which will work on most machines, and then the short one, should you have a machine like the G-Wick or something like that, where it can't go all the way through or it's hitting the knife bed underneath or whatever. So uh, I'm going to uh, put up in the raffle today, uh, 10 of each of those, so 20 total. And just to get a little more information on Patrick's, uh, Patrick, uh, what do, what are yours looking like? Uh, let's see, let me pull up the picture. Oh, it's taking forever. Sorry about that. Um, and just to, just to be clear, anybody that donates anything to the channel today, uh, will, will be in the raffle. So, uh, there you see at the bottom of the screen, um, the link to the PayPal account. Sorry, my computer is not cooperating. With That's all right. And while we're waiting on that, Rich, you mentioned about being late to the party. Yeah. Well, uh, FYI, everything about my file is completely original except one aspect. I did cheat just a little bit. That little bitty spider web in the bottom corner, that's your spider web design from, from, from your Halloween collection. Yeah. All right. So the, I the, thought it looked familiar. The the artwork, even though the leprechaun artwork might be late for the party for St. Patty's Day, uh -huh. there's probably aspects of that light work that can always be repurposed. So, you know, it's a great thing to have. Yeah. All right. I have mine up on screen now. Hang on but, one second. Let me come back. I'm actually uh, playing on my <laughs> my uh, Google Drive here. <laughs> so basically, sometimes if I cut something, it still wants to um, warp or rise in the center of a piece of plywood. Right. Um, maybe you know you have it so that it's the arc is upwards instead of downwards, so it's uh, convex instead of concave. Right. So. If you cut something out and you have a little strip in the center that you need to hold down, I designed these to kind of bridge across there and kind of hold it in place too so uh, it doesn't move around. So that's right. uh, the other one. And then, of course, from the outside, they fit in the center that way. And then there's the prongs have two different widths. That's the wider one. And then there's the skinnier one. So if you have a honeycomb bed with a tighter weave, then it should fit in there and then also have a third size which it has longer uh height from the top of the prongs to the bridge uh so that will accommodate large larger materials and then i have two different heights for the thickness underneath the little bridge uh -huh. basically what that's for is one is thicker and then the other one is thinner it's four millimeters so you have a little more clearance for your co2 nozzle to pass over it yeah, uh, if if need be. So that's the rationale behind my that's design. Nice. I like the way it's uh, split there, and it, and it goes over two different honeycomb holes. That's a good idea. So anyway, that is that. So uh, Wendy, um, I'm going to send a link over there. That is the link to. Um, the spreadsheet on my google drive if you want to enter the the contest we're going to have uh, a drawing one drawing for my hold down pins for anybody that enters that doesn't donate and patrick's going to keep an eye on uh, the people that do donate and we're going to have yep. uh two spins for that so you can either if you don't want to donate to the channel that's fine you can go to that link right there that i just posted in the comments and if you do donate, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get on, on the uh, spin of the wheel for more than one. 
and as well as not only that but there'll be an extra surprise in your package from me that you you'll really like so um you know donate to the channel if you can and it doesn't matter how much it is today and hello in south florida <laughs> i wish we had the the weather that you have right now so um let's get into the comments yeah, I was, I was just looking here at T Tina Kozar. She says, you, I you see know, that. Uh, is too cute. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm making stuff for Christmas this week since I'm going next week to see my family for a really late Christmas get together. Uh, yeah. I, and and uh, on my Facebook, Hobo with Wood, uh, Jack in the shop, which I haven't seen him in here yet today. He he's just posted his Christmas ornament designs and he he's like, hey, man, am I early <laughs> and here here locally? We uh, had a Roush Industries, which was uh, one of the it was one of the largest Christmas ball manufacturers in the U.S. Uh -huh. And they operated year round. So I told him, I said, nah, listen, you're not early. You got to get those prepared. Be ready. But. So I went to I went to a store in Illinois. I think it was uh, the largest Christmas store in the world. Uh, well, they, these, if, this manufacturing, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's uh, part of the same company. Don't know. So we do have our first question. Uh, someone, let's see. Uh, everything Texas Laser Creations. I'm having trouble getting my camera uh, configured in Lightburn. When I try and capture, the setup says it cannot capture because Honeycomb is showing. And that is as far as I get. Well, you can turn off the honeycomb, uh, take the check mark out. But what I find is the best way to do it is run over to your printer and grab, you know, as many sheets of paper that you need to cover the whole bed. And if you do that, you're going to get a really good image capture, really good calibration on the light burn camera. Um, I know that light burn recommends that you use a piece of cardboard on your bed i don't uh, i've done done it with car i've done it both ways and calibration is just smooth and easy if you cover the whole bed with white sheets of paper so and um, i i just linked my video where i go over calibration and i calibrated my camera not even attached to the laser i just kind of had it setting up on a tripod and used a uh, sheet under uh, right just a blank space with the with the dot card to calibrate it because it right. doesn't need to be on the laser to calibrate it. It can be anywhere. Yeah. And don't forget, uh, when you print that dot card, print it to the, the biggest size that you can. So, um, you know, on my printer, it wanted to print it half a page. So I turned it into, uh, what is that? Uh, not landscape, the other one. <laughs> Whatever it is. Portrait. The other mode, not landscape. Portrait. Portrait. Yeah. Portrait. So I put it in portrait mode and made it, I think, 150%. And that increased the size of the dots. And that made it easier as well. So it filled up the whole 8.5 by 11 sheet instead of just the center. So uh, that's that. That's uh, our suggestions on that. Um, let's see. Tina says she's etching glass uh, with a picture of her mom who passed. Sorry to hear that. And 12 by 12 tiles with different things that are that they like for nieces and nephews. That's nice. Very nice of you. I love doing the the uh, glass and the mirrors. In fact, I don't I, I don't even have a, a glass video. I think I'm going to need to uh, do one. Steve, do you have a glass video? I do have one that was early, early in the hobo days is before all of this. So uh, it was a while back and I actually got some really excellent results. That's uh, a high def lion up there that I've actually got reverse lit uh, in a shadow box, and he, that turned out exquisite. But I've been struggling with replicating that. Uh, I've been trying to do some uh, memorial uh, mirrors myself this past week. Uh -huh. but I've, I've learned that uh, the the quality of the mirrors make all the difference in the world, and I, I these have got a different backing on them than what that did. And so I don't know if that might be part of my issue, but I, I do enjoy making uh, mirror images. I've just, it's been so long. I've got to go watch my own video again. Okay, Mike. I've got about no, half everybody's of a, not getting their rolling. <laughs> I've got about half of a video done on 
photos with mirrors using those little tiles and the, uh -huh. the four by fours and the 12 by 12. Yeah. I started so, doing uh, the glass one, but uh, I never did finish it because I didn't like any of the results. Yeah, so I, I, there's only two methods that I use and I'm going to do a video on, on the two methods that I use. So I Steven says uh, in Lightburn under the arrange tab, what is create rubber band outline from selection used for? Under the arrange tab, let me see. Uh, arrange, you know, I've never even seen that. I don't see it. Do you mean on the uh, it, laser tab? No, no, it's on there. It's in the arrange menu and it's about two thirds of the way down. It's just above break apart. Uh, create rubber band outline from selection. I've I've not used that. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I just did it. And let me see what it did. Oh, all it does is shows you the when you do the uh, rubber band frame and the laser controls. Yeah. When you create the rubber band outline, it does that and and shows you what that outline would be on your workspace. Yeah. Well, it does that automatically with the rubber band frame features. So yeah, but this, but this shows it to you. It doesn't show it to you when you do the laser. Uh, shows it to you how? On on the work bed, on, on the uh, screen. It shows you that rubber band outline. I don't know what, what it, it don't shows know you what it's going to. Is. It shows you what it's going to frame if you yeah. rubber band frame it, basically. I I don't know what good that does. It yeah, just, I don't, it just I don't shows know. you what what the it shows you the path the laser is going to take. Yeah, well, so does the rubber band frame when you when you do that. I don't know. I don't get that to show up on the screen. No, it doesn't show up on the screen. But your yeah. graphic is up on the screen, and that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what the benefit of it is now. But now here's what's strange, though, is once I did that, I select that and it show, said it showed the rubber band physical outline, showed the path it was going to take. And then once I uh, clicked away, it stayed there. And now that rubber band path is a selectable image that I yes. can move around the screen. Yeah. What layer is it on? Uh, the cut layer. But uh, you know what? It, 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 it might uh, differentiate uh, depending on what layer the items you select are on. So let me put it on a different, my items on a different layer and create another arrange rubber band outline. Yeah. So it, it goes on the layer of the items. You now, if it's multiple layers, I don't know how that's going to do, but that time I put everything on the black layer, my double alt, and it went everything on a double alt layer. Uh, let's delete that and we'll put a mix match. I really don't know know the benefit um uh, it, it but it creates a permanent physical rubber band outline of the those images that you can then move around the screen so i right. guess i guess that might be beneficial for somebody at some point but mm -hmm. i i've never used it and if i put them on varying paths and select multiple paths and arrange rubber band it put everything in the the first path, which was my double alt. So, um, yeah, never never used it. Honestly, I've never seen it. And uh, Tom, I put a link in the uh, and Wendy also put a link in the uh, comments section for you there uh, for PayPal. So, no, it's not a tool path. It puts it on a layer. I just tried it myself, and it put it on the – I have something that's just cut. Let me go back to it. Here, I'll bring my, bring it up on screen. Okay. So there's uh, – let's see. Let me just delete that. All right. So I have my business card there. I'll zoom in to make it bigger for you guys. And then arrange rubber band. Right there it is. And then you can move it around. Yeah. But what does that do? Go uh, put it back, hit undo, and go to the uh, preview. From there, go to the preview, up top. Where's your? Pre I don't see it. Uh, it's over on the wrong screen. Yeah. So what? What is that going to do to the engraving? I don't know. That doesn't look like a good feature to me. <laughs> Let me group. I needed to group them, but. Is yeah, that the way it's supposed to come out? I mean, that's kind of the inverse. It's missing a few pieces. 
Yeah. And and take off the... Oh, it, it, it's because he's got it in fill mode. If it was in an outline mode, or in line mode, rather, I think that would actually create an actual cut path. It would actually cut out that rubber band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Yeah, so I, I think that's, uh, you know, one of those features that nobody's going to ever use. I, I, yeah, I, if you use if you, if you had a large laser bed, um, you know, and you've got a, you know, a four by eight sheet laying there and you wanted to be able to just cut out the, that entire rubber band area. May, I don't know. but Yeah. So that doesn't have this the, guy and... Yeah, that doesn't look like a good feature to me unless you no. put it on a tool path. Yeah, I mean, or in any in any line. That's mode. What it would... But yeah, the tool path will keep it from cutting out. Yeah, I think it would have it should automatically go to tool path. Uh, yeah. A tool path. Yeah. Agreed. So there's a there's it as a tool path. Right there. Yeah, there you go. And that won't affect your output. Hey, Kate. Nope. And uh Carl uh Carl is uh aka Merle Oliver. He uh, sent me a Christmas ornament. Yes, Carl, I did get your uh, 3D printed Christmas ornament. That's really unique. 3D printing is not of an avenue I have ventured down yet, but or ventured down yet, but someday maybe. Okay. I just don't. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> Mike, I did. Uh, I have scored glass <clears throat> about a year ago. Excuse me, <clears throat> and. Uh, I did it on a on the Nej A4640, and I think it was 100% uh, power, uh, 90 millimeters per minute, and five passes, and I was able to snap it clean. But it wasn't really a clean snap. If you run your finger along it, you could feel all of the bumps because the laser actually uh, fractures uh, the glass. It's not like using a, a glass cutter. I would just suggest you spend the five dollars and get the glass cutter. Uh, Jimmy says he keeps losing his art library. Just turn on Lightburn to look at the rubber band thing, and this time I got a message saying it failed to load. Okay, so um, if you're losing your art library, uh, when you load your libraries before you uh, finish working for the day, if you close Lightburn and reopen it again. It should save everything when you close Lightburn. Uh, when, I, when I've lost my libraries in the past, it's only because those libraries have been on my NAS and mm -hmm. I, I actually go through my main computer, the server, to get to the NAS. And if the server goes into low power mode, well, that's the only time that I lose them. But I have heard of people losing them lately since uh, version 1.3 of Lightburn. Um, I've gotten a lot of people that have asked me the same question about losing their libraries. I, I haven't probably another thing that you can do is if you have more than one laser, switch to the other laser, load a library for that one, and then switch back to the original one and see if it remembers the original library and, you know, then close the program. It should save both. Yeah. I'll have that happen with Google drive. If it happens to shut yeah. down or crash in the background for some reason then it'll unload the oh uh, and... that's another thing yeah i just thought of uh when i used to have my libraries on one drive and if i wasn't connected at the time it wouldn't it would fail to load yep. them as well exactly yes hobo steve is in north carolina <laughs> kate's asking oh yeah yeah gastonia right outside of charlotte uh, let's see. let's see. If you use tabs to keep objects connected, you could use the rubber band line to cut out a piece of that material that has all the objects contained. So you could flat pack, pack mail as a single piece. If you use all, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, yeah. That that that's a good tip. That actually makes sense. The only problem there is. You know, it's going to be could be quite large versus being all the individual pieces just stacked and mailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, maybe so you can see where you can place a pin. I don't know. I don't know. Are you talking about with print and cut? Is there a good learning course for those just getting into the laser business using light burn? <clears throat> well, I've spent uh, probably a thousand hours on uh, creating videos for light burn. Um, the best place to go, I would look, I'm going to tell you right now, don't buy the online classes because there, there are several people out there that are offering online classes for light burn and charging 500 to a thousand dollars for the subscription to get started. And, uh, they're not That's teaching crazy. very much. Let me tell you. So, um, you can both my channel and Steve's channel, both of us here, uh, teach light burn on our channel. We teach the functions of light burn. So uh, you might want to go check out our channels. Uh, on the bottom of the screen, you'll see Steve's. It's Hobo with Wood. And mine is the Louisiana Hobby Guy. So you can get um, uh, learn, you know, uh, good learning examples on either channel. We cover just about every feature of light burn. And I just don't don't pay for these online courses because they're not what they appear to be. Yeah. And that, and, and that's helping with the, the tech and using the software. Uh, and then I'm reading the question as far as, you know, uh, for those just getting into the laser business. Now, if they want to talk about business aspect, I don't go into that much, but using the software, we get, you know, in depth on that. Uh, yeah, trying, trying to uh, go into business, uh, and, and it also is, that's going to come down to, you know, your your how your learning curve is going to be huge. Initially, I went through so much material trying to figure out how to do stuff, uh, right. a lot of waste. So my cost was way high. So whenever I was looking at trying to sell something to make money, that wasn't feasible. And then yeah. also time is money. If you've got a little five watt laser and you think you're going to go into a laser business. That's not really realistic. You can maybe accentuate products you're already doing, but it's kind of hard to start a business with a five watt because it's just well. That, it's yes, just yes, yes, and no. You know, I, when I when I first started uh, selling, I did a lot of uh, Facebook market marketplace ads, and I would run an ad on Friday night and collect orders and work on them Saturday and Sunday. I did everything local, deliver them Monday and Tuesday, and yeah. Stay you know, I had a good five, six hundred dollar a week part time income. Yeah, so small, with a small. with a five watt. Yeah, yeah, with the original or tour Laser Master two. So uh, you can do it, but uh, you're better off get. I th my laser of choice is a ten watt. And uh, and I and I think uh, what you're describing there for me, and this is everybody's perspective is different. That's a uh, that's a hobbyist who's capitalizing on his his hobby. Right. A, a business is not a weekend job. He's if you're going to do it uh, five to six days a week and it's going to be a business, uh, you're not going to do that with a five. Life. Right. Exactly. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Army Dogs Creation received his winning from last show. I don't I don't know what you won. <laughs> uh, your uh, flat pack. Oh, one of the flat packs. Okay. Oh, great. Well, I'd love to see. You know, I have a forum, lahobbyguy.com. Click on the link there that says forum. You can go on there and post the, your creations there. So I'd love to see it when you get it all painted up. Uh, come over to the forum, sign up. It's a free forum. There are tons of free files, tons of free art libraries. There are uh, cut and engrave libraries there, all, all sorts of things. Just go to lahobbyguy.com. Hi, Jim. Glad you're here. And well, I had my first four tour laser where I went to learn <laughs> was LA Hobby Guy Forums. And yep. I'm, I'm not as proficient yet with this uh, live stream and getting my screen to come up. I've kicked myself offline two or three times to do it. <laughs> uh, if you look at, at the time, okay. time yeah, and, and while you've got it up there, uh, Carl Riley there at 223, he, he asked a question that you can probably show here. He says, oh, yeah, so screen, I, yeah, I took all those windows off of my setup over here where he had the question. Okay. So when you go... Wait. Go yeah. to window, and I want my cuts and layers back. So this brings it back up, and then you just slide it over here, 
And when you get it in the right position, it'll it'll uh, dock. Now that will not play nicely with laptops. I can tell you that. Uh, if you don't have a 17 inch screen on your laptop, it will not double click it, Patrick. Let me see. Bring it back over the window and double click it. Double click. Double click. Yep, yeah, right now. Double click. It's not going to drop in there. Yeah, sometimes it does. And yeah, you must be on a laptop there. No, it's my desktop. It's your desktop? Uh, you got uh, the screen too uh, small. Yeah, yeah that's below it now. Yeah, but then we can move. You can move. You can move everything around, no matter where you want it. But it normally just. I think it's because it's wanting to cut over on the edge of my screen. Right. Yeah. Yep. But, but to get to, to get to it, show it again, just real quick, where you go to actually turn those on and off. Because they docking them is one thing, but just giving access to them. Just to the window. Okay. Window. Yep. And so then there, that's all the separate menus. That has everything that you would want. Yep. So hopefully that helps out, Carl. Carl is a, a, a regular commenter on my channel. I appreciate you, Carl. So I am uh, looking for mine, but it will there, not. Here we go. Window. Yeah, here it is. All right. Th this one's wanting to work. So if I pop laser out, then I can bring it right back and nest it in there then there are the tabs then you can rearrange these however you want just by sliding them back and forth and then you can also resize yeah so uh let's see i think uh mine is just a little bit brighter than yours yeah um but on any uh regular computer you can you can pull these out and put them right back. So you could take it out to use it and then stick it right back in there. But on uh, on laptops, um, I can tell you that Lightburn does not uh, play nicely with laptops, that's for sure. So you're gonna, unless the laptop is 17 inch, you're gonna have problems uh, with docking those, those, uh, those tabs. Uh, the best thing to do with a laptop is try and dock it way at the bottom then move the other tabs to that one, and then you can bring uh, uh, another tab up again, and it should, if you move it to the right, it should dock above it. Laptops are very funny with Lightburn. There's a lot of, and I tell you, I don't understand it uh, to this day. Uh, looking at all the comments, there's tons and tons of comments, people talking about different techniques that they used with engraving glass in the mirrors. Yeah. And the my, the, my number one uh, in my uh, the analytics on YouTube is constantly a mirror uh, yeah. that I did. Yeah. And there's a technique that I found that no one's talked about here. And I found it by complete mistake. And it turned out really cool. And most of most people know by now that you shouldn't be using ammonia based cleaners to clean mirrors because it can ruin a mirror. Well, what I did when I engraved the back of a mirror and had exposed the glass on the reverse side there i actually did clean it with ammonia base and an alcohol cleaner and then let that dry and then put a painted uh, spray paint finish on it and you've seen an antique mirror where you can tell it's really old because you started getting bubbling and lifting and the discoloration on the glass that happened within about 12 hours yeah and it created an antique look on that mirror and that really w was kind of cool so yeah. if you want a, a different look to a mirror you might try you know and, and but experiment with something small and they see if you're going to like it and how the outcome is because it's a bit unpredictable right uh, and if you've got a 16 hour burn on your laser and you put this on it and ruin it don't yell at me but so, uh, uh john um i did the uh rotary setup in my review of the uh, Roly. So uh, the, the Roly has the easiest rotary setup I've ever seen. Uh, it's got its own uh, dedicated Z port. You just plug it in and you go. So uh, the Roly gives you uh, an LB set file to set up the laser. When you first add the laser to Lightburn, that, that automatically puts in all of those properties for you. So it's plug and play. 
you just plug in the rotary and put it in what position you want and you choose a position from the move tab and that's it i mean i i did cover all that in the original review very video hey jerry glad to have you glad to have you uh in there uh i was just on jerry's live yesterday if you guys want to know anything about uh 3d printers uh, search 3d hp on uh youtube and jerry has an awesome channel he makes some awesome things <laughs> you just wouldn't believe i think he did a castle that was like it took like uh i don't know two or three days to print <laughs> But he has all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, hi, Gail. Bye, Gail. <laughs> See you <laughs> later. Uh, Thomas is asking if Ortur is coming out with a 20-watt module upgrade. Well, they told me in uh, October, I think, of last year that they were going to be sending me uh, a 20-watt for review uh, coming in January. So we're now, what, in March? Uh, haven't heard back from them since this question comes up a lot in their facebook groups and uh, the answer that our tour gives is it's still in uh, r d so now i can tell you that lots of companies are coming out with 20 watts as a matter of fact uh let me move my camera here real quick and that what you see right there is the Creality Falcon, and that is a uh, the Falcon 2 by Creality, which is a 3D printer company, um, and they're known for their quality. So uh, that has some real, it's 22 watts, has some really nice features on it. Uh, in fact, if you look, you'll see the three lights across the top. The one on the left is the air assist. Right now, the air is off, so you see that it's yellow. Uh, that goes from red to not enough air to yellow for engraving and green for cutting, depending on the uh, amount of air that you choose with the little dial on the side of the laser. But it also controls the air in light burn. So if you tick on air assist in light burn, it turns on the air automatically. Just to the left of the laser, you'll see the little M7, M8 box on top of the gantry. Uh, nice laser uh, it's i'm testing it right now for a review there are a, a couple little things about it that i need to talk to creality about before i would recommend it but the build quality is on par with the roly and uh but it is just a base laser you know as far as being precise it's not because you know there are no standoffs to set the honeycomb bed into so that you know exactly where you're engraving you still have to do a lot of framing and stuff like that. But I mean, quality wise, it, it, it's built really, really nicely. The only thing I don't like is that uh, emergency stop button on the top. Because every time I go to position the wood when I'm framing, I hit it with my arm. But <laughs> that's one of the few things that uh, I don't like. But yeah, there, there are uh, a, a quick update on the Battle of the 20 Watts uh, that I announced about a month and a half ago. When I announced that, all of a sudden, I had four 20 watts in the shop. All of a sudden, I had companies coming out of the woodwork uh, wanting to send me 20 watt lasers, and Creality is one of them. And so I've I've got five more. So it looks like that battle of the 20 watts is going to get pushed out maybe until May or so, because I've got to get to all these different ones. I've got the Sculpt Fun. I've got just a, a bunch of them that are waiting, and some of them are. Uh, you know, the real, real big ones, uh, 800, 400 by 800, you know, stuff like that. So um, I think I just turned on my, my track. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> I, I wish it would stop. Stop. I went like this and it turned on. My, oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, will I turn it back off again? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, over here. Here I am. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that the 20 watts and some people had questions about the 20 watts too with the large spot size. Uh, can they do uh, intricate work? And here are some uh, flat packs that I'm doing for my patrons. 
and you can see that all of the little fine details in there are done came out nice but uh i'm gonna say that i did have to push them out with my knife <clears throat> unlike with the roly where they all just fell out on their own and i wasn't able even though it's 22 watts compared to the the roly behind me um the speed let's see let me look at it real quick in light burn the speed i did this at was cuts and layers uh 600 speed as compared to i think 340 i did the roly at so uh yeah not a not a it's not really double the speed but pretty close to it uh and i still prefer the the roly because of the precise uh positioning i i screwed up three pieces of wood on the creality three three pieces of 12 by 12 wood because uh, I thought I had them framed right. And that's across the room on the other side of the room. So I'd have to hit the frame button, run over there and look at it. And uh, I screwed up three pieces of wood. I didn't screw up a single one on the rolly because of the precise positioning. So, um, you know, <clears throat> I can't say, I, I'm not a fan of, of the 20 watts. I'll just say that. Um, I'd rather have the smaller dot size I'd rather have the precision positioning. Roly is coming out with a, a 20 watt. So um, I don't know if I'll be a fan of that one either. Maybe I will because it'll it'll be precise. But um, yeah, so the battle of the 20 watts is being pushed off until about May. And uh, Ortur does not have a 20 watt right now. And they have not announced it since the last time I heard from them. Uh, let's see, J.G. Otten, any tricks, insights, thoughts on connecting the Ortur chuck roller to the HR20? Well, I think the HR20 has a USB-C plugs, if I remember right. So I don't think you're going to be able to connect that to, you have to, you're going to have to use the HR roller. Uh, I guess a way that you could do it is if you trace the wires back to the control board and unplug the Y from there and, and plug your roller into the Y. But I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure what those connections are. Um, I don't have one handy. Uh, yeah, Carl, <laughs> I'll agree with that. <laughs> and before before we get too far down the line, there uh, uh, upgrade mirrors. Oh, go ahead, you go for that one. Upgrade mirrors on the Montport K40. Well, yeah. Um, you can just, you can go online, buy any mirrors that you want. So, uh, it's all, it's all interchangeable. What, what is up, you know, an upgrading the mirror? I didn't, a mirror is a mirror. What, how, what are you upgrading? Well, no, there, there are different types of mirrors. There are expensive ones and there are cheap ones. <laughs> so you have some that, that are just a, a, a basic coating that's thousands of a millimeter Right. thick like you get on the mom port yeah and then you have others that are actual mirror coatings that are much more expensive okay so um yeah you you can buy you can go on ebay um you can go on amazon uh you know you can go anywhere and, and buy upgraded mirrors uh back up one there to uh the my favorite name of all stumbling bumbling idiot that's mike yep uh not that one where did he uh yeah i can never get my stuff to dock correctly in light burn i usually just reset the window and let it alone well uh and again i wished that i was proficient as you guys but you might be able to put that on the screen as i talk about the uh that tip that you taught me about rich uh, -huh. uh instead of using docking i just did a video on my channel it, uh, in the past couple of weeks, Mike, where I talk about how to use docking in Lightburn and a couple of quick tips about docking before I talk about that. What was that? Uh, a line, uh, a range, a line. What is it? Yeah. So uh, I'll, rubber I'll band cover, outline. No, 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 no. I'll cover that real quick. Well, while so, you're pulling that up, let me finish on docking. Do first, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do the docking right now. Well, docking only works when you're on the tool bed. If you're not, Mike, if you're not on the tool bed, docking is not going to work at all. And then second, 
dock only works when you're docking uh, two pieces that are not within, uh, when you're not trying to dock a piece within the other piece. Yeah, two You've group to, pieces. Yeah, if, you, if, if you're trying to dock an inner image, then you need to use alignment, align left or right, top, yeah, bottom, that's... not docking. Docking is for two group pieces to meet each other. Right. Uh, but Rich just showed me something this past week that when you've got multiple images and you're trying to get them all docked and nest things together. Yeah, here this, we go. Yeah, so this is really a neat tip. If we select both of these uh, graphics right here and we go to, let me make this window bigger so I can see it. We go to arrange and come down here to distribute. It's not and scrolling. I, I, I know you can't really see that, but uh, it's right under align is distribute and then down to the bottom move vertically together they're yeah. now perfectly none of none of your menus show up uh, well, I, well because my my screen size this is a uh, uh, 60 inch TV that I'm doing it, it on well, if you're if you just share the window it won't pick up those extra windows you have to share your actual screen no I have I can see it on the screen I'm looking right at it yeah but it doesn't right. share it but it doesn't, it won't share those extra windows. Okay. Well, I thought I, I thought I explained it. So I've got this one. Yep. If I bring it down here, you can see that, right? Yep. They're separate. So if I select the both of them and then I go to arrange, distribute, and then move vertically together or alt shift, um, and V, then they will all shift together so that you'll only burn one line here as long as you have your uh laser set up to in your optimization settings to uh eliminate overlapping lines now that that comes with with just two items docking is just as easy but that comes in really handy when you have multiple like five or six images yeah that you want to just nest all right up together now when you do a range uh horizontal or a range vertical there's no way it, it just pushes them, butts them up against each other. It doesn't actually allow you to create a buffer, does it? No. But when you use docking, you can act, you can use your docking tools to create a one millimeter buffer. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you can only do one image at a time. I think you can't do multiple and just like bam or, or can yeah. you? Yeah, you can. You can select them all and dock them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's the biggest thing that I learned, Mike, is docking does not work if you're not on the work bed of in light burn if you're and i design all the time off of the work bed mm -hmm. and i can't use docking but that what? that arranged vertical and horizontal it works regardless uh by the way uh stumbling bumbling idiot is the is my forum moderator over at lahobbyguy.com on the forum so just to let you guys know uh mike does a great job over there keeping all the all the spam away and everything else <laughs> But if, uh, if you've still got any questions on docking, check out my channel and search for docking. Yeah, Steve did a long video on it. So yeah. uh, it'll take you step by step through it. Um, best thing to do is go watch those videos. We don't have time to do a complete demonstration here today. And Sharon says that ex that's explaining why her docking doesn't work as expected. <laughs> Uh, let's see, a newbie using a Surface Pro and an external monitor, uh, HZR P20 with light burn. I didn't know you could, well, Surface Pro runs Windows, so I guess, you, I guess you can use it. Yeah, I don't know how well, uh, it's probably going to have the same issues as the laptops do. Limited graphics mm -hmm. capability. And that I would not want <laughs> a 10 inch screen. <laughs> I can barely see. I have a uh, twenty uh, two twenty seven inch screens in the, in the office, and I can barely see those. This one, I think, is a thirty inch. I'm at the point. I need bigger monitors. I can't see. Or bigger anything. glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I have my readers right here. Yeah. <laughs> so Carl's saying that he's hoping to have his Roly in a few weeks. Um, I understand they've started shipping the uh, the pre orders. So. Uh, I know a couple of people that have already emailed me that they've gotten theirs. So um, that, now keep in mind that Roly is not um, in charge of this. So 
they they're sending out batches of lasers to Amazon and Amazon apparently is having some kind of weird thing going on where they're moving the shipments from distribution center to distribution center. So you order something on Amazon and it ships to another distribution center before it goes out to you. I don't know what that's all about. Um, and you know, Leo is new with Amazon, so but I'm sure he'll get it straightened out uh, pretty soon. Yes, uh, they are working on a 20 watt and they're also working on a 40 watt for a summer release as well. Okay, let's see. Uh, there he is, Steve. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jack, you were the, the topic of conversation early on. You missed out. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So uh, Mike has the original Creality Falcon 10 watt. Yeah, I, I think the original one was the 5 watt. And then they came out with the 10. And now they have the uh, 22. Uh, let's see. Carl says mine's pre-order March, April. The basic model is available on Amazon. Yeah, the basic models are going to pop up uh, from time to time because they are supplied by Rolly, uh, the ones without the enclosure and the honeycomb and all that. Uh, but uh, I would wait personally for the one that I have. And Mike, Mike admitted what he was doing, doing was working off the bed. That's why he's having trouble with docking. I don't know why that's an issue, why that matters, but. Yeah. So Tom's stretched the uh, OLM3, I guess, to the 800 size, 800 by 400. And they're waiting now for the 20 watt. Uh, Tom, did were you able to order one? Because as far as I know, they haven't made one yet. I was supposed to get one pre-launch and I haven't heard from them. Uh, John says, uh, will the 20 watt fit? the 10 watt the answer is probably no um the 20 watt is going to be bigger and i believe there's going to be a new uh gantry design so that hasn't been that question hasn't been answered yet uh it's still in r d so um leo is still working on the engineering for that one okay let's see Okay, we're not going to, you know, you're not in trouble this time, but don't do it again. Yeah, next time is a different story. I don't know. He's in full military garb. I don't think I'm going to mess with him. <laughs> I have my Roly already. Um, I purchased when the first group was released. Awesome. I'm sure you're loving it. I know I am. What is good laser to use for cutting six millimeter wood? I have a 10 watt now. I cut six millimeter wood like butter with the Roly. Uh, that's 10 watts. So uh, the key to cutting is um, doing a grid. And uh, I do it on everything. Um, I can I can show you right, right here. Every, everything I do gets one of these. So this will tell you how what speed and what power you can uh, run your laser at and cut through wood. And you have to do that on uh, every size, um, every every thickness of wood that you have. So if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, a 10 watt laser, which uh, you do, I have a 10 watt library for sale in my online store, engravencutfiles.com, um, that has hundreds of settings for a 10 watt laser that I created for the uh, Roly Laser Matic 10. So uh, engrave and cut files.com. You can pick up that library there and that should help you with uh, cutting with a 10 watt. Well, the one thing that I've noticed that laser manufacturers have seemed to have just recently started doing is they are including instead of just a, uh, a, a step, standard, lead. Huh? The a step, step lead. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is what I'm used to seeing is just you, you know a single flat, and that's for focusing on the surface. And just recently, thanks to talking with you and, and watching, 
you know, those step gauges come out. If you're going to be trying to cut six millimeter wood, you're not wanting to focus here at the circle. Right. You right. need to, I've been lowering my focus to about th uh, the midpoint of the wood. So that might be something that if you're struggling with your 10 watt cut in six millimeters, what do you, how do you refer it? Anti-focus? Uh, defocus. De defocus? Oh, anti-focus. Yeah, yeah anti-focus. Yeah. You know, for cutting. Yeah, for cutting. So yeah, you're you lowering, lower the fo lower yeah, the lowering focal that focal point. point down to about midpoint of your material. And that helps with, you know, the my brain just shut down. That helps with trying to cut. Yeah, well, now that you do that to a point. So um, you're, you're going, you're going to lower your focus to half the thickness of the wood up to six millimeters. So uh, if you have an eight millimeter piece of wood, you're not going to lower any farther, further than three millimeters. That's when I go get my skill saw. <laughs> yeah, that's when you should, you should be using a circular saw for that. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, Ed, don't do it again. We'll forgive you this time. Uh, let's see. I run, Jack runs three 21 inch monitors at his desk, and two of them above his CNC. Yeah, I think anybody that's been doing this for a while has multiple monitors just about everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like, though, to have a remote control available next to my laser like you said the laser's over there and you got to uh test your frames your frame and yeah right over there yeah i'd like to be able to remotely hit the frame button oh you do that with a wireless mouse oh now well still so got, you, well yeah all you do is plug in a wireless mouse then and leave it alone don't use it use your regular mouse yeah and when it comes time for frame and grab the wireless mouse pass the mouse over the frame button, lift it straight up, walk over to the laser and just tap it. You can frame it as many times as you want. Ah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I, was um, that I wasn't realizing that you're picking it up. Yeah, now it's not going to move around. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So oh, is yeah. there uh, uh, Malvady Designs, is there a way to make the Falcon 10 watt wireless? Not that I know of um there you can probably um you can probably do it with a uh, uh, raspberry pi you know uh i don't know i i've never tried it but um there there's no way that i know of that to do that i ordered something off amazon i live in the center of pennsylvania it was sent from pittsburgh distribution center to new jersey yeah that's what's going on with the rollies they're being sent all over the place Hey, if you live in uh, Pennsylvania, you might want to check out. Um, let me see what the name of that is again. Oh, I'll get there. Uh, Walnut Road, walnutroadcollection.com. Uh, let me just switch over there and show you this real quick. Let's see. Chrome tab right here. So um, this is Walnut Road Collection. They're in Pennsylvania. Um, this is a shop that uses uh, carbon-friendly, uh, oh, not carbon-friendly, I forget what they call it, eco-friendly wood. In other words, they, they use all uh, felled trees. So any tree that's, that's uh, dead or, or whatever falls down, they go ahead and they reclaim it, and they make beautiful hardwood coasters. And all kinds of all kinds of things. This is their laser engraving section, uh, all hardwoods, some beautiful stuff. Look at that blistered maple. You know that's just incredible. And I have a bunch bunch of this stuff here uh, in the shop. And um, let me show you real quick. They they engrave absolutely beautiful. So take a look at that, that photograph. That was just dropped into Lightburn. No editing, no nothing. So th this is this is one of their one of their coasters. This is another one. You know, you you will not get a better engraving um, than on on uh, hardwood. Uh, and if you saw my my fingers there, <laughs> I'm still. And he zoomed out again. I'm still. Uh, <laughs> I'm still painting. painted from 
uh, doing my little uh, gnome guy this morning. So let me see. Uh, let me get this camera to respond properly. There he is. Uh. So this is my little three-dimensional gnome. And uh, it's all cut out of one piece of wood. So I just glued these pieces over here on top and the mustache on top. Put a spacer up by the, the hat where the belt buckle is. Really nice, neat little project that you can put away in your uh, in your repository for next year. Because <laughs> I'm always late for the holidays. And I think this year I'm going to do uh, Halloween, 4th of July, Halloween, Christmas, and Thanksgiving all by the 4th of July. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me take a look <laughs> over at the spreadsheet real quick. No, I don't see anybody in the spreadsheet. That's okay. And maybe that, that spreadsheet might not even be working. Who knows? If you're referring to donations, I've heard, seen many people only that they've donated to PayPal. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. probably the best way to do it. Okay, so let's see. Um, is there any way of changing the grid pattern in Lightburn, but the grid on my screen... Uh, top to bottom instead of left to right. Uh, you must have the origin set wrong. Uh, because I have a, a 400 by 800 uh, here in the shop now. Um, the scope fund. And mine is oriented properly. Uh, so you must have your origin set wrong in, the, in your device settings. Names to remember. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. and just spoke to them last week and it was coming end of february but now they say end of march well that's pretty much what's been going on with our tour since september so uh, every time i ask they tell me next month got an email uh from leo stating that my pre-order shipment 410 might ship a week earlier from another distribution center fingers crossed can you tell me what the maximum cutting size is? Uh, if you're asking about the bed size, it's 400 by 408, I believe, or 415, one or the other. Uh, it's a standard size. Uh, Ed says, I was watching Hobo with Wood video the other day saying to myself, this guy looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why. Why? <laughs> Oh, you talking about as it was a, a early video, maybe? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I I started this whole hobo thing in June of last year, and I I was freshly cut, clean shaven, uh, and decided, you know what? Since I've created the hobo character, I might as well embrace it wholeheartedly, and I haven't shaved or haircut since. <laughs> so. Uh um call it when on the pre-orders you've already paid a hundred dollar de deposit and what happens when it's ready to ship leo is going to send you an email with a hundred dollar coupon to get your hundred dollars back to a link to amazon where you uh buy it from amazon and then all the tracking goes from there so the first communication you're going to get is from um leo Mike says, tip if you join LA Guy Hobby Guys Patreon. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, if you join my, my uh, Patreon account, um, <coughs> something in my throat today, you get uh, anywhere from 80 to 100% off in my online store, engravencupfiles.com. So there's all kinds of electronic files uh, with holidays there as well, holiday stuff. Uh, so, yeah, all, all my patrons get a discount depending on what level you're at, 80, 90, or 100% off. Thanks for bringing that up, Mike. Uh, Steve just got his notice from Amazon. Awesome. awesome. My problem is it's a D1 Pro. <laughs> Let's not get into X tool. <laughs> Uh, any chance to have a li have library settings for the 35 watt laser? Well, Bob, uh, I have the 35 watt, but uh, it blew my control board when I hooked it up. So I'm waiting for a new control board from Acer, 
and uh, it will take a while, uh, weeks, to develop the library for the 35 watt. It took me, I think, 130 hours to develop the 10 watt Roly. So uh, it, it's going to be a while before that. Uh, Belgium. Oh, nice. Glad to have you aboard. Let's see. Uh, just the orientation of the bed on light burn. It's kind of weird lining my stuff on the screen from top to bottom. Uh, yeah, that's the way it is, top to bottom. So uh, your, your, your Y uh, on the Artur extension kit is the top and bottom. Your X is left to right. So, yeah, that's the way it's going to orient is it's going to orient in a rectangle and it's going to be long up and down. So, yeah, that's that's normal. You got it right. Uh, Carl says he has the Ofero 2 and expanded it to 400 by 600. When I come home, it runs into the upper right before it home to the lower left. Can you tell me what I did wrong? So uh, that's going to be in your device settings, um, and you have there's going to be uh, four little radio buttons up at the top uh, for the origin, and you have your origin set wrong. So let's see what you did, upper right, lower left. So you have to move that uh, radio button diagonally. Pick the radio button diagonally. Um, you have to pick the top right corner. When I home runs up right before. Home to low. Okay, you have to pick the bottom left corner then. So device settings, origin, bottom left radio button is the one that you're going to want to pick for it to home to the lower left. Yes, the Roly does have uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, so it uses web UI. So you can design in Lightburn and you can be in, in, your, in your house, uh, you know, 100 feet away. And you, what you do is you save the G code, you log into the web UI, which is just a web address, and you upload the G code there, and you hit start. So uh, yeah, I love. I happen to love the web UI. If you look at any of my review videos, like on the Long Array Five, uh, I did use the web UI on that, and uh, I like I like using that wirelessly from from the other room. Uh, is there a way to connect the camera remotely or does it always have to be plugged in into your computer? The camera on the Roly, is, you, you have, it has to be plugged into your computer. All light burn cameras have to be plugged into your computer. Clever mouse trick. I've been using that mouse trick for a long time. <laughs> So I'll, my, I'll, my I'll, desk has been oriented in the front of the room and the lasers have always been behind me 10, 12, 15 feet. So I'm, I just I'm got trying. a wireless mouse and plugged it in and just left it on the side, you know, and didn't touch it and used my regular mouse. And then when it came time to frame, I grabbed the wireless mouse, put the mouse pointer on frame, lifted straight up off the desk and walked back there and just tapped the left mouse button in. I wonder, I, and I'll be using that a lot. And now I'm sitting here thinking, uh, I wonder if you were to position the mouse where it needs to be and then actually cover up that optical sensor. You can do that. Do Put a piece of black electrical tape yeah, over it. And then just take the lay of the mouse laying there on my next to my laser. I can just click, click, click. I want to I want a frame. But I, yeah, that's well, okay. So I gave you an idea. Now you gave me an idea. We're even. I'm yeah. going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> That will be a new permanent position for my wireless with it blocked. So it'll always be on frame. Hello to the Netherlands. Glad you could uh, show up today. Uh, let's see. Mike says you could replace the whole board, but I don't think there's a connector on the board for a wireless connector. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, if you want to upgrade your module, where's the best place to order from? I find that AliExpress is usually the, the best place to order from. If you've got a week or two, uh, you know, to wait or maybe three weeks, um, that's, you're going to find most of the things on Amazon at half price on, uh, AliExpress. Uh, 
We need to make those glasses light up. <laughs> well, I've got all different yeah. styles of these glasses with all different colors and things like that, but like none, the, none of them light up. <laughs> the neon outline frames is what yeah. I'm picturing. Yeah. And you know what? Mardi Gras just passed. I'm sure I could have probably caught one as a throw from one of the floats, but I didn't go this year. <laughs> Uh, the company in Pennsylvania with that beautiful wood is Walnut Road Collection. It is walnutroadcollection.com. And my friend Steve over there uh, is the one that actually made, makes these coasters. So uh, he's a sawyer and it, it is a retail business. So you can go into the store and he has all types of things, slabs, uh, different size pieces of wood tables you know all types of stuff uh and i was just focusing on the coasters but that is walnutroadcollection.com uh let's see do you have somebody right down the block from you there uh steve yep miss kate and thank you diane much appreciated yeah yeah jerry that's um uh, that's his connection. He's got a satellite connection that's not really stable all the time. Hey, Patrick, I, uh, can, can was, we see? What was that? I said, can we see some uh, the uh, rotary uh, thing you got set up for production? I forgot all about that. Yeah, sure can. Um, first thing I'll show is the light burn screen. I'm sure everybody wants to see that. So, let me get my little highlighter here. All right, it's probably be, probably be hard to see, but this is up in the laser tools menu where you would find your rotary and cylinder correction. And you'll have the repeat marking, which motor you're gonna use. You have set your steps per rotation, minimum speed, max speed, the acceleration. And then it also has return speed and if you want to return to start or home on start and so there's some other settings there and once you have that set up now he's creating and, some really cool jigs yeah and lightburn makes this easy all you have to do is put in the your count number so six and then hit calculate and it'll set your degrees appropriately so let's say i had 20 slots that I was going to use on this rotating jig and hit calculate and it'll do the math for you. Then you can actually change the your jog degree. So if you need to fine tune it, you I've uh, lowered that to one just to uh, line up my jig and it works quite well. And then your typical start and frame buttons there. So I made this jig and it just mounts to your regular chuck rotary. So the jaw is tightened and it clamps it in place. And this holds business card. Your typical business card. And it also holds it also holds the RFID wallet. If you're wanting to uh, engrave the wallet and it'll and they'll drop down in their flat. And then you could engrave six wallets at a time. And then cut it to pull those out. So I'll just run a demo job. And this is going to go through six times, but not mark anything, just to show you. Oh, it would have. That's cool. It would help if I uh, put it back to the proper. Uh, Spacing. There we go. They're now it's set up for six. That is awesome. So to actually see it in practice, um, let me change this real quick.
and then I'll hit go. It helps the turn my laser. Did you focus your laser? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. <laughs> I just didn't have the source turned on. All right, now, here we go. This is fun. And this is great if you're doing production work. Somebody orders a hundred business cards or something like that. It's all automatic. Look at that. That's awesome. And then you can also set the pause after each move. This truck rotary tends to vibrate a little bit after it spins so i set it for one second to give it time to settle in and stop moving and then the laser ah, that's a good idea that's really nice you think you could get a faster laser <laughs> yeah i can run the i can run those faster oh i was being sarcastic <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should have uh I can switch to a different setting and then it'll run at a crazy speed. Now, Patrick made these custom jigs. Uh, he's got two of them that uh, he's going to be selling as well in case anybody's interested. Uh, if you have a rotary, they fit right onto the jaws. There's the other one. This one is for pens and pencils. Uh -huh. 20 so he's got the business card one and the pens and pencils. And I think he's going to be selling those as a package. I am. I'm going to sell the files. And also, if you can't cut your own acrylic and you want me to cut them for you, I will be selling them uh, pre cut and assembled. So Ed is saying uh, to make the lasers wireless, the diode lasers, he uses a small new computer and a USB hub. And that way he can send it into the nuke and open the project there you can also use a program called virtual here um, and i have a video on that so if you go to my channel and search uh, remotely control your diode laser um, you can use virtual here and set up uh, one com computer as a server and the other computer as uh, a guest and you can work remotely on the other computer I just saw Jerry commented, my O2 3D printing, I have a, this bike is unprintable, and I printed out four of them. They're awesome with those B-blocks to uh, level tumblers. Yeah. You can then laser them. And these things, this is really cool design on printable. But now you can see all the business cards are done, and we can switch to the next job. <coughs> So Kate's saying, Rich and Steve, why don't you like X Tool? Well, we're we're in with the thousands of people that don't like X Tool <laughs> because of all the little bugs that they have, the the flawed design, um, the proprietary stuff. There's just so many so many reasons why we don't like them. Their their support. Some people love their support. Other people never heard from them again. So uh, yeah. it's it's just too much to get into, and I really don't want to talk bad about uh, a company. Um, we just don't support them so and we've only got 11 minutes left we don't have time <laughs> yeah uh, the cutting bed on the rolling is standard size but you can actually fit larger pieces in it not sure how much laying it on top of the honeycomb bed gives you at least another inch well it won't travel any further than uh what's in the device setting steve so uh, it'll only go 400 on the x and 408 on the y so there is extra space there, but it won't travel any further because you'll activate the limit switches. A question that nobody has asked is um, on the pass-through, uh, will they be coming out with a pass-through? Yes, they are in the next iteration. I think the ones that are going to be produced in May are going to have front-to-back pass-through. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Jerry says X2 Homes to the top left. Yes. 
X tool does. Yeah, all the X tools go to the top left. But he don't know if you can change it. No, you can't. There's not much you can change in the in the control software on the X tool. So it's proprietary software. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> Good to see you here. I think I'm behind in the comments here. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the wood source. It's tough to find. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Steve is a great guy up there in Pennsylvania. He's got a retail store there. Uh, he'll cut to whatever dimensions that you need. Uh, not, it's not cheap. You know, these are, these are hardwoods that are hand cut and well, <laughs> yeah, but time is money. You I mean, if you get a exactly. good, quality, good quality product ready to engrave, you don't have to prep it. It's ready to go. It's worth it. Can you use a diode laser to engrave on the inside of a ring? No. Huh? No. Hey, Rich, check the uh, private chat there. Can you okay. get a Please. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Are we ready for that? Yeah. We're, we're ready. Let me just do one more check. No, you need a, a fiber laser to do that. So, um, I I've done it with a ring. Yeah, a ring on your wear. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it. I've got a video on it. Well, you can anneal it. You can't engrave it. I mean, the only thing you can do is put a black mark on it, and it would have to be, you know, stainless or silver or something like that. Uh, you know, I I can't get anything out of any other kind of metal. If you can, it, it's it's uh well, and and I think what I was working on was uh, one. I had one success and one failed and probably what you're talking about the first one was on gold i think and that i think it did okay but the next one it had very little marking but i was using that was one of my very first videos when i was still using the x tool and the ra2 uh -huh. and you, you have to incline the rotary at about a 45 degree angle propping it up so that the laser that diode can hit the inner part of that ring and it's it's tricky as as i'll get out to even get it lined up framed it is not worth time and trouble can it be done uh i guess depending on the material and the ring you're using uh but i found it to be it wasn't feasible to do it for any type of income i i never it, got i never got a mark out of uh i never got a mark out of uh with a diode laser so we're we're good to go yeah i'm trying to find my uh my spin the wheel i can't seem to find it it's right next to your spin the bottle yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could just get back to my drive it's keeping me in spreadsheets now okay drive and it is not showing me because i'm in the wrong account okay Well, why don't you guys take over while I do this? Because uh, I'm not finding my spin the wheel. Let's see. I really hate the way Google Drive does this. Drive. Okay, I think this is the right one. See, somebody was asking me about my FFL. I have the manufacturing typo 07 FFL. So if you do have any FFL questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer any questions along the way. Well, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm just going to go to the one on, uh, on the Internet and do this instead. Because mine is not showing up. Okay, so uh, we've got 13 entries. Let me come back over here. To, let me close all of these tabs. I have so many of these drive tabs open right now. And uh, how many packs were you going to do, Rich? Um, I am going to do two packs of the honeycomb hold down pins. And Patrick? Two. Two? Four? Uh, 
I'll, I'll, uh, I'm gonna up it. I'll do three uh, Spidey uh, patterns. So it'll be seven giveaways. All right. So we're gonna do seven seven spins today. That's awesome. So most everybody is uh, gonna get <laughs> is gonna get something here. All right. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Here we go. We're gonna do the first the first spin. <laughs> we have our drum roll. First one is Diane. And what was we spinning for? Um, we're gonna start with mine. So these are the honeycomb pins. All right. So there's one honeycomb pin from Rich. Yeah. So we're gonna uh, close that. You know what? And I think I should remove her because I could always put her back in later. And we're going to spin again. So that's one. Let me just uh, get my pen so I can keep track of this. Hang on one second. Yep. Keep keep uh, knocking around. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my pen. All right. So Diane is my first winner. All right. We're going to spin again. Names to remember. That's going to be a hard one to remember. Yeah. Names to remember. Okay. And we're going to remove that one. This is for Patrick. Jesse Jackson. Okay, so those are my three okay, you're uh, doing packages great. Okay. of those are my three packages of the honeycomb uh, hold down pins. So now we're gonna start fresh with a whole new everybody back in to win. Everyone's back in now, and this one is gonna be for Patrick's uh, what hold down pins. The hold down pins. Okay. How many spins? One? You can do two. Two spins? Okay. Yep. Here we here we go. Here's the first one. Uh oh. Oh, Gail. Grand. Gail, you blew on that. I see it. <laughs> All right. So here's the second one. Richard, Richard Nering, you got that, Patrick? Got it. Okay, so we're gonna close that. I'm gonna come over here and put everybody back in again for Steve's. And Steve, what is yours? We're going to, uh, three file downloads off of Hobo with Wood uh, for the Spidey, and and if you don't like the Spidey, then you any download any file that you that is on the Hobo with Wood. Okay, here Rich, we go. Uh, Jerry's asking you to check a PM he's saying. Okay. Uh, I can't do that from this computer, Jerry. Sorry. Jesse Carrion. You got that, Steve? Yep. All right. So now, uh, to make this easy, uh, let me see. Let me get rid of that. I gave my email address in chat, so if everybody can just send their addresses to me, and I'll send the appropriate person. Okay. That'll work. Jerry, I can't get to my uh, PM from here, so um, you know I don't I don't know what that is, but <laughs> um, I can't do it from here from this this room. I have to be in the office next door to do that. So sorry about that, bud. All right, so there we go. So to make this easy, well, that, was, uh, that was that was only one for me. Oh, you had two. But I was going. I was three. I was going to make it worth everybody's time and trouble. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me go back to it then. Uh, let's see. There we appreciate, go. Appreciate the donations. Okay, so you need two more then. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here's the next one.
Diane. Write that down, Steve. Got it. Got it. Okay, we're going to remove Diane. And here is the last spin of the day for free files from Hobo with Wood. Wow. And Jesse again. Jesse racking up. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are done with that now. So to make this easy, um, Diane, names to remember, and Jesse Jackson, uh, email me your address at the la hobby guy at gmail.com and again that's t-h-e l-a hobby guy at gmail.com you got to email us too so that we can send out your prizes patrick uh, give them yours it's admin at lightsource.pro so admin at lightsource.pro and uh steve is Hobo with wood at gmail.com. And that those, like I said, that Spidey download. And if you don't want the Spidey download, anything that I've got <laughs> on the site will substitute for your, for your taste. I want the Spidey download. <laughs> we'll see what we can make happen. All right, folks. It is 90 minutes sharp. Uh, 2.30 here in Central Time, 3.30 Eastern. Uh, that is the end of our broadcast today. I want to thank everybody for being here and i want to thank you all for coming anybody that's watching the replay thank you for watching the replay the replay will be back up on the channel by tomorrow and uh don't forget we're here every other two weeks don't forget to share our videos on your social media and get people to come join us we're going to do this every two weeks every two weeks we'll have new uh files to share with you and new prizes to give away so say goodbye guys Thanks for watching, guys. See you later, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, the rest of it, anyway.